Okay, so it's time for the Alabaster Oracle. Du, 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 Alabaster Oracle Ooh. made by the wonderful people of the Alabaster Oracle. You know, it's like, well, it's like Walt even, you know. Connor, can you pick one to read out for us? Because, but first, there's a creative. Everyone, uh, there's a creative writing workshop. Join the Writers Block Club every Tuesday at 8 p.m. at Avon's Cup, oh, which we also have a mug of on the store. Sure. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Go check it, baby. But, uh, Connor, would you like to read one of these? Want to read sure. Improve Your uh, Safety? Because I believe you believe in safety, right? I believe in safety. I do. I believe in safety, too. Let me just find the actual post. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta go read what Hulkinator just said, though. Hey, Papa Pal Remy. Yes, Papa Pal Kiwi. How do you greet a person you just saved? I don't know. What do you say? Nice to bonk you. What? Bonk on the head. I'm going to send you a link. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I just got it. <clears throat> no worries, I'll there. read Poult Poultry Plague's Pretzel Purveyor. This also this amazing art here on the left. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> By Monty Glue. <laughs> Monty? What? Yeah, that's the that's DM Monty's of the art. Unexpectables. What the fuck? <laughs> all right. Here we go. In the green gardens of the Druidic District, a common sight is a pretzel push cart proprietor that serves up the warm, salty treats, both with and without mustard. Mm. Unfortunately, as spring has sprung, the area has also begun to become host to a deluge of drakes that desire to dine on the delicacies. It all started when the businessman, Ron, was uh, kind enough to distribute some of his overstock to a few mallards that were resting in the park during their long flight back north after a winter spent in the south. At first, it was just a couple, Ron stated. I gave them some odds and ends and a bit of a batch that I had already gotten a little scorched. But day after day, more and more would show up. While Ron was willing to leave the leftovers to the birds, his problems began when they started getting greedy and grabbing pretzels off his cart when he wasn't looking or even snatching them off the hands of customers. The other day, one of my regulars, the captain of the guard, was here with this lady, and one of those beasts snatched her, and snatched away her no-salt honey, honey mustard twist. The captain chased the thief around for about five minutes before finally giving up. He may be tall, but he can't fly. In response to this increased instance of avian miscreants, the city guard wanted to disperse the flock, but to little avail, as they simply return once any perceived threat is gone. The th one thing that has made a difference, according to Ron, is the presence of a regular visitor in the district. It's a sweet young woman who comes by with a fat, blue, scaly dog, I think. And even though he just sits around and the ducks scatter when they come up, he doesn't even have to chase them. I guess it just goes to show they're smart enough to realize when there's a dangerous predator around. <laughs> That's good. Monty has a very good cartoony style. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to read Imp Improv Your Safety. Keeping yourself safe in the city as bustling as Alabaster is a priority to everyone. However, carrying a blade, a club, or a decent projectile spell on you at all times isn't as simple as it sounds. Blades break, clubs crack, spells sizzle, in times like these, you need to think on your feet and think fast in order to survive. For some people, it's natural. But it isn't. But if it isn't, where will you go? Glam Glitter, a former fighter, adventurer, bodyguard, and current stand-up bard entertainer, has started to teach an improv class to teach everybody, everyday citizens, how to use everyday items in an imp as an improvised weapon. T Panic, we're going to this. <laughs> he keeps reading. Oh shit. <clears throat> You won't believe what everyday items I can use to kill a man. I thought, with all what happened over the last couple months, I can easily pass on some of my skills to those who need it. Glim said in one of his in a one on one interview, for the most part, it's getting students out of their comfort zone and speaking off the top of their heads. 
give them a random scenario, have them act it out. I show up in a protective suit and go for the attack and see how they react. Then, as a group, we discuss what happened and other suggestions on how to improve that performance. We go down the line and do the next set of scenes and come back around. I'll come in at a different angle and see if there's any improvement. I tend to get people on the third or fourth class grabbing a chair and hitting me on the head on instinct. Glenn explained how the chorus works and offered me a chance to try it out. A small group I was a part of was to bring a, a couple of everyday items. Glenn took uh, items and laid them all out around the room where we were. We did some stretches and some word association games to get our creative juices flowing. Glenn then went around the room and asked us for names, locations, occupations, scenes, and then mixed them up and created a scene. The one I got was a personal shopper for a, no for a noble at a farmer's market. Glenn set up a couple of items, some on a table, others on the floor or leaning against the wall. We acted out the scene, which was really odd but slightly fun. Glenn came at me as I was shopping. An instinct kicked in. I grabbed, him, grabbed the closest weapon, which was a banana, and went for the eyes. Glim later said that, it, that I was a natural and that he needed to invest in a faceplate. <laughs> okay. I want you to know I got that reference to how to defend yourself against a fruit. <laughs> but Borky can't read. Hashtag 100 bits. He will. Borky will learn how to read. Slowly. He will learn. Oh my god. Come on, I think it's time for the lady of Liveros the letters to the Lady of Liverosia. Yay! Da, 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 da. Dear lady, I came to Alabas exiled from my kingdom alone and with no knowledge of the world. Over a year later I found myself a job, a home, and a new family who care about me. But therein lies the problem. I have my relationship with my friends, work family, and a woman of which I have come to care greatly for within this wonderful city. Yet my kingdom and my people lie far across the Orlean Sea. Oh, the Orlean Sea. I have a duty to find my family, duty to my family and my people to return and take up the throne. But the life I live here is vibrant, filled with the laughter and love that I never received back home. I'm torn between the love of my friends and the love of my people. Can one truly choose both, or must the l love of a few be sacrificed to serve the many? Signed, Royal Refugee. Dear Royal Refugee, I love you. You are the fifth or sixth royal heir that is written to me about, which really says something for Alabast as a destination for nobility on the run. Tourism department yep. is really doing a great job, nevertheless. Nevertheless, uh, love of those around you and love of your duty for your country are often hard to balance, and this tension can cause grief or guilt. Both are valid and laudable. The only one who can truly determine what is best for you is you. Sit down and make two lists of what is important about each. Compare them as an exercise to provide some clarity. Speaking with people you can trust can also help. Sometimes just voicing your concern can help you decide. Regardless of what they say, the choice is yours. Body break. Question for the lady. Dear Livrosia, I'm wishing for advice on how to court a cute druid lady. I'm currently having difficulties approaching her. However, as her swarm of pet rats keep on going after the blocks of parmesan I keep in my pockets as good luck charms, the help will be greatly appreciated. Signed, The Cheese Seeker. Dear Cheese Seeker, I love you. Regardless of how you fare with the lady... Uh, of how you fare with the lady that's caught your eye, it sounds like you've made a horde of new friends. Often advice... Uh, advice is to ingratiate, ingratiate yourself with some, someone's pets, children, or friends in order to catch their attention. If you are genuine, good uh, good relations with those around her will follow, but using her rats as an in is not a good basis for a relationship. Maybe in the future, don't take cheese, but for good luck, take along some something she might like. This season is the this season of spring. She could appreciate some Dahlia tubers or daffodil bulbs. Don't stress about the perfect gift. If she is receptive, she might let you know something even better than you could share. In the end, presents or plays of affection to her associates are not the main thread of the relationship, but how you get along with her. Hmm. Dear lady, I'm experiencing issues with love. Not love of country, religion... A significant other, but something harder, a 
struggling with love for oneself. Throughout my life, I have been insecure and unable to love all of my imperfections and defects. I am told more often than not that the first step to the road of happiness begins with accepting yourself for who you and what you are. So I asked your lady, do you have any advice for this endeavor? Signed, an ins in insecure individual. And thank that scruffy guy for uh, the six month resub. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. But here's ha half my viewers and my ch my champs and my subs. Love you, bro. Thanks, scruffy guy. <laughs> Dear insecure individual, I love you. You've hit on the most difficult love to express. It's easy to list our own failings, and sometimes we deny our strengths even when others point them out. Constantly remind yourself that you are a unique creation of the universe. There is nobody like you. Simply taking a few moments each morning after, walk, after waking and each evening before retiring to remind yourself how special you are. You can accumulate self-confidence Treating yourself to an occasional treat, whether it is a snack, an activity, or a few moments of fantasy, can be a good way to reward you for just being you. Lastly, remember, no matter what you tell yourself, I will always love you. Well said. Valithia hide ribbed for protection, now with new turtle and dragonborn sizes. Oh. Oh my. I'm going to read a poem. From Skip Leche. Group plays a violin and a piano beat hits. Pops once said the world is full of dread. The reign of just Orin is long dead. The clergy causing a massive hysteria. Families torn running towards Arcadia fear spreading like a plague, making sure to keep their reasons vague. Hate and stupidity without reasoning is just insanity. The new age of poets are rising, those who seek a voice. Each one of these new age poets speaks out for an injustice and mistreatment they have endured. The hearts and souls can be heard from these young men. Dig for victory now, Alavast City Council. Reward any persons who can locate Captain, I don't know, sort of us, please contact Mira Sar Sarna Seatnermist in Lower Crafting District. Good information will be compensated. Keep your mustache in shape. Strong mustache wax. Oof. Which one would you like to read? Or would you like to read? What, would you like to read another one, dude? I'll read a. I'll read an ad first, and then I might read uh, hmm? the gentle touch. Oh my! Which, which one you read? Uh, cowboy bugbears West West barbecue sauce. Four out of eight clerics can't tell what they're eating. It's better that way. Cowboy Bugbear's West West Barbecue Sauce. Eight bottles sold separate. <laughs> All right. And the gentle touch. Late last week, the Alabast Council in charge of health and safety released its annual uh, its annual yearly hmm, uh, health and safety guide. Tips and advice to stay alive in Alabast. While most of the tips in the 172 booklets are good advice that many people should know. Gelatinous cube evacuation plans, what to do when you get stuck between planes, how to cook giant chicken eggs. It's the 10 pages of instructions on intimate encounters that have raised some eyebrows due to in-depth details and vibrant diagrams. The city itself is a melting pot of different beings from different races, religions, and nationalities. And here exist unique circumstances for love to bloom. But here are some risks involved in pursuing that love. Average humanoid. Humans, elves, genasi, tiefling. Let us get the simplest ones out of the way. When it comes to the races that fall under the average humanoid category, knowing your partner's limits and likes are key to a happy and healthy relationship. A lack of communication between you and your lover could have dire consequences. Trying something new on your tiefling partner could get you on the wrong end of a barbed hide. Not listening to your water genasi... To what your water genasi says to... Wait, not listening when your water genasi says to stop could end with you experiencing accidental drowning. You could just get punched in the face. There are things that you and your partner need to discuss before deciding it's a good idea to move forward. Short stature. Dwarves, halflings, gnomes, goblins, and shorter people. Similar to the suggestions in the previous section, communication and knowing your partner's limits are vital. It's good to know when your what your partner's what your partner can and can't handle. Depending on what category you fall under, it's best not to go in full force when your partner isn't prepared. 
it would be best to let them take the lead until they know and until you know they are comfortable with you. Suggesting some daily squats, stretches, and diaphragm exercises might be help in some areas. Oh, lubrication is also a good thing to have on hand as well. However, for most cases, you will have to come to the realization that something might be physically impossible. Uh-uh. I saw, I saw Brawly and his new wife character. I don't believe that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the sheer mechanics of it are mind-boggling. Hmm. No, it's not. Just imagine a hamster eating a banana. I've seen that image. <laughs> what is with you, Toriyama? <laughs> Why do all the Saiyans fuck small things? It's so weird. It makes us feel more powerful. It's true. What did you say? I think I love you, sweetie. I love you, sweetie. Larger mass. Orcs, Goliaths, half giant. For anyone who is dating someone who is on the massive scale, you will need to make sure you're stretched and <laughs> you're well stretched and keep your lower body limber. Many are faced with embarrassing injuries due to not stretching beforehand. While squats are a good starting point, clerics suggest you need to focus on your knees and ankles for the heavy lifting. <laughs> it's also best to perform deep breathing exercises before and during to keep yourself calm and not pass out. Remember, lift with your knees, not your back. Scaled variety your back of kobolds. can never be too big. You have to walk sideways to get through doors. Scaled variety. Kobolds, dragonborn, dragons. Dragons? Okay. When it comes to those of the scale variety, uh, the scale variety, the council suggests you make sure you are well protected. Leather body suits can be found at the Light My Fire romance shop in the entertainment district. They are great at keeping you from injury when you move your body against the scales of your lover. If not, then using lotions or moisturizers to coat the scales might give you a better chance at coming out of the session without a rash or worse. Be wary of their talons as well. While a scratch down the back is a good thing, they might go a little bit too deep. Also, in case of a dragon, make sure they have something to keep their polymorph intact throughout the experience. Imagine. Imagine. Awakened. Constructs. Soul-infused items. Floronic beings. Mimics? Continued on page eight. Okay. Bark has been taking notes. I have a question, actually, about this. If I'm uh, four yes. times the size of someone I'm dating, is it is is it considered a kidnapping? No. All right. Dude. But if you climb a building, it might. Okay, just clarify that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Dumb idea. Anyways, working crosses it out. Who are you four times bigger than? A really, really tiny person. Hmm. Dude, my back is so big. I have to walk sideways through doors. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can never be too big, though. No, it's true. It's true. This was amazing. Thank you so much to all the people from the Alabast Oracle. Alpharax, Night Hunter 66, Fozzy Wolf, Froggy's Mom, Jim the Rabbit Cow, Poisuit 47, Gavin Gregory, SU1, Ryleberg, and Redacted. All you monster fuckers out there. Yeah, absolutely. Good on you guys. Very brave. Very, very, very brave, all of you.